the chatter around the hall tells me that it's a friend, it's a friend friendship gathering more than a series of lectures, and I'm so glad for it. Without further ado, as you MC for the evening, my name is Jasmine. I'd like to invite on stage Dr. K. J. John to give us a welcome address. Dr. John. Allow me now to say a few words to set the context for why we at Homestead are doing this event and why we did it in 2012. I will cover five topics. What is integrity? And I'm still trying to keep the comment. Who is OMSI? Why pick on Dr. Tan Chikul? Why a public integrity award? And why a keynote lecture come dinner series? This is the second one we did. First about integrity. I would say integrity is the most expensive word in the 21st century. You see, human dignity, both ours, yours and mine, makes the entirety that I'm as concerned about the other as I do mine and ours. Therefore, integrity in my definition can also mean doing the right thing, both when all are watching and in a mature democracy. Now about OMSI. OMSI is an NGO registered under the Companies Act since 19, 2005. It is run on a voluntary basis by a team of founding directors and advisors. We take no salaries except we pay for project managers we bring on the to do project like this. OMSI prioritizes two sets of activities of import and value to Malaysian society. Through our NCOI series, we highlight core issues and concerns facing the nation in terms of integrating within the state with constitutional integrity. So I said OMSI prioritized two. One is the NCOI series, the second is the Tanjiko lecture. And in this lecture series, we try to invite radical Malaysians who have who lead a life of personal and public integrity to speak and teach us about this very concept. As a 21-year-old PTD officer, I was first, I first heard the late uh, Dr. Tanchi Kun as Mr. Opposition in Parliament 1972. I was totally impressed with his two sets of ideals and ideas. One was his command of Bahasa Malayu. That really touched me. I felt embarrassed and called myself a patient because he spoke so well in Malay. The second was his oratory passion and arguments in favor of the poor and the migrants. That touched me. So our goal in the Tanchikun lecture series is to educate younger generation Malaysians to completely understand the true meaning of what personal integrity is and constitutional integrity must be. This year, for the first time ever, we were convicted it is time to announce that TCK or Tanchikun Public Integrity Award because the nation elected to migrate from May 13th to May 9th. And we have a teacher that says we moved from May 13th to May 9th. And we are proud and very proud. We now have a PH government, but I must also recognize that we in civil society want the government to migrate first, further and faster towards new governance under Malaysia 2 We applied some concepts to review who can receive this award and came up with three, seven R, a seven R model actually. The seven R's are revelation of what is good, responsibility and accountability, representation, role re assumption, relationship, rights of human beings, which is the human rights argument, and rights and wrongs in life. I am not giving a lecture on this because each of them will take at least 20 minutes. We also agreed that the dramatic changes of May 9, it is time for us to begin to recognize great relations. So today's event is our effort to begin to recognize some great relations for who they are and what they live for. So on behalf of OMSI, allow me to thank all of us, all of you who took time to come tonight at some 
did not make it for various reasons, especially in Kumsiji Asana, Sri Sisrao, I apologize on the behalf. Breakdown of my breakdown of communication with the PMO. On behalf of OMSI, thank you for coming, but I want to conclude with this. The agenda of integrity is first and foremost our agenda, which is a fight, I call it, against bribery and corruption. A fight against bribery and corruption. To summarize, it's our A, B, C agenda against bribery and corruption. It is as basic as ABC. If we don't address that problem, I am not convinced that the country can move. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. And we're here, we're all gathered here to also celebrate a man's life of integrity. And we'd like to get to know him a little bit better. And to help us do that, I'd like to invite on stage his daughter, Professor Tan Kole. Please put your hands together. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, to our honored guests, um, Dr. KJ John, all the young Bahamats that are here, um, friends. I was given 10 minutes, I'll do my best. You have a lot of detail in that folder in front of you and lots of old photographs, which takes me down memory lane. Now my father, uh, Dr. Tan, was best known for his contribution in the 60s and 70s. So there are many here who may remember him and some who do not. He was a tall man, uh, striking, very humble and of very simple taste. MCA people used to laugh at him because he would prefer to eat a street food or a stall rather than a sumptuous Chinese dinner. Now a lot of it is explained by his background. So my father became a voracious reader. He, um, he had a wonderful memory. He would, would have read all of Roman history. Um, his memory that is not matched by anybody I know. The other thing that strikes me about my father is not only that drive to succeed, but his success and service on many fronts. My father was also sticking with a great many people. He had this beautiful smile that he would offer to, to his friends. And when he saw that smile, he was just enchanted. I, I think it was enchanted. <laughs> okay, so he had a great many people, a whole network of people who were with him. So it was not one man, it was a team of people who worked together because they believed in integrity. They believed in not being bought in by power. So that's that was his contribution in the second part of his life. Now in conclusion, I want to say this. From John chapter 15, the Bible, verse 13, says this, Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. And this verse has been taken and used for the soldiers of World War I. The poet Wilfred Owen adopted this verse I think my father lived this verse because he had great love and he laid down his life not just for his friends. I believe he laid down his life for his country. Thank you. And to help us get to know him even better, I would like to invite on stage into Taufi Ismail to share a little bit about his views. Thank you. Good evening. On February 25th, 1971, on page 248, hands up the words of the Tanji Kun, quote, Never have I had the need to resort to racial arguments in this house or elsewhere. Two decades of my speeches and writings for five years spoken in this house 
the bad testimony to this end quote. The late Kansui Dr. Tan Chi Kun is an outstanding Malaysian and an exceptional parliamentarian. He was also a patriot and a nationalist when he recalled how in 1967 he supported the National Language Bill going against his own Labour Party. In fact, he went on to give advice to the government on how to strengthen the acceptance of the national language. There are many who forget the context in which we live, that the heroes of our nation are not just those that serve in government. As the effects of G14 are yet to be felt fully, it is time to reflect on the achievements and disappointments since independence, and the heroes that shaped our thinking, and our success in accepting peacefully the unforeseen results of May 9th this year. The late Tan Sri Dr. Tan Chi Kun was one of them. I wish there would be a hero's memorial that would give him and others like him the eternal gratitude and honor he so richly deserves. Thank you. Without further ado, we're going to bring, we're coming to the highlight of our evening. And I would like to introduce to you an influencer who influences through her writing on the internet. She speaks the proof to power. She models the quality of citizenship that we are striving for in the new nation. Please put your hands together and help me welcome on stage Madam Mariam Mokta. Imagine if you can. The Prime Minister, Dr. Mahathir Mohamad, if he will come to you and say to you, can you do something about national integration? What would you say? Yes. Or do you think national integration with integrity is a myth? Do you? Let me show you something. Can you all see this?
presents the really small stuff, the trivial, that makes life much nicer. Things like the designer handbag, the designer watch, the jewellery, the foreign holiday, the imported sports car, the yachts, <laughs> the latest smartphone. Now if you take this job and fill it up in the reverse order, so you put the sand in first, meaning you put in the designer accessories and the material goods in first, the trivial stuff, you will find that there won't be much space left for the golf balls or the pebbles, which are the things that matter to us. Try this at home and see for yourself. And the same is true of Malaysia Bayou. Think of the things that matter most to us first. Because if only the golf balls remain, if you recall, in what it is just now, our life would still be meaningful. We would be happy. And the same is true for all of us. We have the ability to accomplish anything, but only if we set our priorities right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for giving me the honor of addressing you tonight. And thank you to the organizers and to KJ John for inviting me. I'm here because of one man, Dr. Khan Chiku. friend. Others will have heard of him, but a number of you, especially the young ones, probably have not. Dr. Tan did things out of love. He did do things for money. For decades, our politicians broke the law, our leaders broke the law. But we kept quiet. Why? Because we suffered from a condition known as T and S, the real Latin symbol. The symptoms of TNS are a fear of losing one's job, a fear of losing a contract, and a fear of losing one's place in society. The other bad habit we developed was that we only listened to the voices of the doctors and the kunku, the people who were somebody in society, or the doctors or the lawyers. We ignored the voice of the ordinary person. In order to serve this community more efficiently, Dr. Chan took the trouble to the Tamil and the Javanese and added these to the repertoire of languages which included Latin. Despite his support for the Malay language, he warned that nationalists will try and derail the speaking of English in Malaysia. He was right. The predictions came true because today there are some relations who think that if you speak English, it's unpatriotic. Rule number four. When you have faith, everything is possible. But when you are insecure, you tend to become a bully. Down the road from here, at a place called Taman Midan, a church was forced to remove its cross because the villagers said that the young ones might be facilitated. Do remember that in Dr. Khan's childhood, there was no television, and his mother would entertain the children with stories from a parable. For the young, Dr. Khan, faith was his guiding light. Tool number five, in the convent. We were very happy to eat together with you know, all the girls and share our food during the set of break. But today, I am told that at school, teachers were warn the Muslim people not to share food with the non-Muslim friends. In my time, the school canteen was open during Ramadan. But today, some non 
Number three, three east and west relations equally. Number four, reduce the wealth gap between the haves and the have not. Number five, do not politicize languages.